Cartoon Network, a television channel that's known for its considerable library of animated shows. From robots fighting monsters, to watermelon children, to jumping over pits of death, Cartoon Network has aired all kinds of creative shows over the years, and I want to share with you all my personal favorites. Now I'm going to try my best to find unique reasons why I enjoy these shows in particular, so it's not just me saying the animation is good over and over. I'm probably going to say that over and over. My mom, 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 my mom. This is the top 10 best Cartoon Network shows. Before we start, I just want to mention that I updated my Patreon and have some new rewards. Group chats, early video access, having your name mentioned in the credits of my video, and much, much more. Now, my content will always be free to watch, but if you want to support me directly, then go check it out. Alright, number 10. Space Ghost Coast to Coast Now, I realize that this show aired on Adult Swim, but that was not always the case. Heck, it existed before Adult Swim was even a thing. In fact, Space Ghost Coast to Coast was one of the first fully produced shows by Cartoon Network. Well, Nobody cares, Moby! Nobody cares. No one. Space Ghost Coast to Coast had a unique approach in how it presented itself. It was a talk show, and it used old animations and characters from the original Space Ghost cartoon. They would then interview random celebrities and purposely screw up the interview so the characters had more material to work with. Ah, uh, Space Ghost, Coast to Coast. Number 9. Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends Foster's Home had a fantastic premise. It's a world where people, typically kids, can imagine beings into existence and become friends with them. But just like some pets in real life, people occasionally abandon their friend. That's where Foster's Home comes into play. It's a place where these imaginary friends can stay and hopefully be adopted. It's such a creative world, and since the characters are imaginary, there's no limit to what can be thought up. It can be talking pizza. The visuals are vibrant and most of the characters are fun, except for Blue. He's one of the main characters from the show. He's a troublemaker, selfish, and just an overall jerk. I mean, I know he's supposed to be an instigator for adventures, but I really never cared for him. I thought you said you needed some money. I do. How much you got? I got a five. Gimme. And you? Three dollars eat 22 cents. Also, this show has one of the best cartoon intros ever. Number 8. Star Wars The Clone Wars I know that this isn't technically a full-length show. It was a miniseries that Gindy Tartakovsky made that aired between Star Wars Attack of the Clones and Revenge of the Sith. It features events that happened, coherent battles, adventurous stories, character growth, you know, things that George Lucas should have done. Indeed. Gindy has a great eye for action and how to get the most out of cartoon characters. There was even an episode where it shows how formidable a Jedi could be without their lightsaber. Where the Star Wars prequels failed, this miniseries succeeded. It was able to utilize the Star Wars universe in a way that was exciting. I mean, General Grievous was terrifying in this series. He gave the Jedi a legit reason of why they should fear him, but in Revenge of the Sith, he was a bit of a letdown. It goes to show how the world of animation has no limit. Number 7. Ed, Ed, and Eddie. This show purposely set limits to itself. The main cast were the kids from the neighborhood, and that was it. The setting itself was the neighborhood and the surrounding area, and that was it. But these limitations made the show endearing. We grow accustomed to the kids in the show and how they behave, how different they are and how they interact. Kevin's a bully, Johnny's a weirdo, Eddie is a schemer, and Rolf is a farmer from somewhere. Do you live in a cave? 
All is forgiven. The Eds and the neighborhood kids have wonderful chemistry, and it provides for all kinds of adventures. Number 6. The Amazing World of Gumball This is the single most underrated show on Cartoon Network. The writing in this show is outrageously brilliant. There was even an episode where they acknowledged their Chinese ripoff and how they should be different, or, preferably, drive themselves off a bridge. The show has a diverse collection of characters that showcase different types of animation. They even have a talking mouth that has an existential crisis. That's a wrap. All right, thanks everybody. What? What's going on? Huh? Huh? <gasps> Number 5. Regular Show This cartoon really resonated with me. The main characters are mostly a bunch of 20-something-year-olds who are just trying to make it through this stage of life. I was going through my 20s at the time, so I was really able to relate to them. Cheap meals, getting yelled at by your boss, fighting cosmic creatures on a weekly basis. Well, that didn't happen to me too often, but the character interaction in Regular Show hit home for me. I also enjoy the old technology featured in the show. What are those statues? They're the guardians of obsolete formats. Betamax, 8-track, floppy disk, reel-to-reel. -reel. But my favorite thing was the comedy. I mean, yeah, Regular Show followed a formula, and it got a little repetitive, but the jokes always had me laughing and Muscle Man was my absolute favorite. I know someone you can help. If you say your mom, you're fired. My mom? Get out! It was worth it! Number four, Steven Universe. I remember when I first watched this show, I was at a car dealership and was waiting to get my new car. I was in the waiting room and was watching this new show on Cartoon Network. At first, I thought it looked kind of dumb and dismissed it as one of those weird new wave cartoons. A few months later, I watched the show again and fell in love with it. I had no idea how deep the show was and how it has an overarching plot. It kind of reminds me of Avatar in that way. The colors are pleasing, the music is chill, the characters have creative designs, and are mostly fun to watch. But Steven Universe has this habit, though, of picking up steam with its main story, and then stopping for a slice of life episode. And that kind of annoys me. I mean, I know they are just trying to pace things out, but that is my one complaint with the series. All in all, it's really good, and I'm invested in the story and how it concludes. Number 3. The Powerpuff Girls What can I say? This show is legendary. It was basically the crown jewel of Cartoon Network for a while, and even had a theatrical release. Didn't do too well, but the movie itself was fantastic. I was about 11 years old when this show came out. I didn't care that it featured little girls as superheroes. If anything, it made me love the show even more. It made for a great contrast. On one side, the Powerpuff Girls. On the other, nasty monsters and crazy villains. Speaking of which, the villains in this show were my favorite part about it. I mean, you got a flamboyant version of Satan, a bratty version of Batman, and a chimp that literally explains everything he does before doing it. I do not talk like that. The way I communicate is much different. I do not reiterate, repeat, reinstate the same thing over and over again. I am clear, concise, to the point. I Overall, Powerpuff Girls is super fun. It was consistently good with its writing, animation, and characters, and I was hooked on it from start to finish. Too bad they screwed it up in 2016 with that abomination of a reboot. Apples and pears! Me voice done changed it, did? Number 2. Dexter's Lab As a child, I loved playing with my Lego and building giant robots out of it. Creating machines that would fight monsters with super cool lasers and rockets and stuff. My imagination could only take me so far though. And then I watched Dexter's Lab. <laughs> Thank you.
I absolutely love this cartoon. Even when they had episodes that did not feature robots, the characters were hilarious, the adventures were fun, and the show only gets better with age. I rewatched some of the older episodes and discovered jokes that went completely over my head as a kid. Dancing, I'd like to see you dance. Oh, okay, but it's 50 bucks extra. Dexter's Lab was also important for Cartoon Network. It was their first real original cartoon that launched a new wave of animation for the network. If you haven't seen Dexter's Lab, do yourself a favor and go check it out. Stand back, cause once I reach my maximum size, I'll be living long. <laughs> Before we get to number one, I want to mention a few other shows that I enjoy but did not put on this list. Chowder, Flapjack, We Bear Bears, Johnny Bravo, Kids Next Door, Billy and Mandy, Over the Garden Wall, and Adventure Time. Now I feel that some people are going to be mad at me for not including this one on my list. I realize that this show was important to Cartoon Network and was very popular, but it never really clicked with me. I respect it, but I don't really care for it. <sighs> Brother, stop that! And number one, my favorite show on Cartoon Network is Samurai Jack. <laughs> Samurai Jack is one of the most unique shows on Cartoon Network. I mean, what kind of cartoon features a main character who barely speaks and instead has long gaps of basically silence? That's a bold move for a show on a kid's network. The creator of Samurai Jack was Gindy Tartakovsky, the guy behind Dexter's Lab. He went in a new direction with this show, combining elements of sci-fi, fantasy, and actual history. A coup is influenced by Japanese culture. The Spartans are from the Battle of Thermopylae, and also Frank Miller. Samurai Jack is full of all kinds of inspiration, and that makes for an interesting setting for this cartoon. You never really know what kind of adventure Jack will find himself in. One week, he's fighting zombies. The next week, he's in space fighting robots. The setting is super influential in the success of this show. Next is the animation. We have battles and fights that feature fluid movements, content that is way above the average for most networks. And finally, the characters. Now, Jack is great, and I love how stoic he is, but Aku, he steals the show. Aku is easily one of my favorite characters of all time. From his temper tantrums to casual chit chat, Aku is a villain who you love to hate, but all for the right reasons. Extra thick! Jack came back for a final season on Adult Swim and wrapped up earlier this year. It had all of the elements of the old show, plus a little bit more since it was no longer confined to children. Whoa, what a freak. Looked like a talking penis. The conclusion for this show has some mixed feelings, but I won't spoil it for you. If anything, Samurai Jack is, in my opinion, the greatest show on Cartoon Network. It was adventurous, had fantastic characters, fluid animation, an epic story, and an actual conclusion, which is rare to see in the industry. And that's why Samurai Jack is my number one choice for the best shows on Cartoon Network. <laughs>